I thought I was ready. I thought I could take him on my own. I was focused. Focused on winning. I never even saw it coming. Gone. Knocked out. Losing life. But something in me spoke. Get up, it said. I've got you. You can trust me. It's time to fight for your life. Welcome to church. It's so good you're with us today on our online service. We pray that you've encountered God through our worship today and that you are really experienced in the presence of God no matter where you are on your home or on your device. We pray that through this time you are encouraged and remain strong in God. Become dealers of hope to a hopeless world. Make a difference to those people around you. All through Scripture, there's many times where God exhorts the people to stay strong. And to me, Joshua stands out of one of the heroes of faith. Joshua was one of those people. He was there with Moses going through the 40 years in the wilderness that he was, went into the promised land and spied out the promised land with the 12, uh, 12 spies. And then he came and, and Moses had died and he was to take the leadership and, and lead the people into the promised land. And the first city he had to face was that city of Jericho, the walled city. And God told him to walk around it and shout. And sometimes I think in circumstances, the circumstances are real around us and, and the word God gives us can see so, seem so strange to us. But I want to encourage you out of the story of Joshua today about being people of faith who hear God. You know, over the last few weeks, we've talked about faith. We've talked about how to build your faith. And I want to encourage you through this story this morning. So Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 to 9, it says this, Now no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not abandon you or fail you. It's, it's a strong scripture. It goes, be strong and courageous. But I want you to see these words. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. It, it's such an incredible thing of what's being offered here. But God is really encouraging Joshua. He says again, I would give, I would give them be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. It says, be careful to obey the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or the left. Then you'll be successful in all that you do. It's important to catch that, that he had to be strong and courageous and that he would start to, to keep the law and the promises of Moses that was given to him. Keep it in front of you. It says, study the book. Keep the Word of God in front of you. Keep your Rima Word in front of you. Study that book. And then it goes on to say, it says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. See, I think Joshua was a man who wasn't strong and courageous. He comes across as being strong and courageous, but God had to say to him all those times, be strong and courageous, be very strong and courageous. Because I think God had to encourage him that he could do it as he wants to encourage us that we can do it, to keep the Word of God before us. It's so easy in these times to listen to all the different words that are coming, all the words that are coming from people, from news reports. We need to keep the Word of God in front of us all the time. He said He'll never leave us or forsake us. He said He'll take us through all circumstance. The Word of God needs to be in us to encourage us all the time that we are strong and courageous. In the middle of challenges, when we're in the middle of the challenge, and I think we're in the middle of challenges right now, and it's, it's easy to, to come across as being cocky but it, as a Christian, but it's not about being cocky, it's about being humble. 
Faith, as you see, is confidence, not cockiness. And I think we actually need humility as we walk through these times that people see that we're reliant on God. One uh, Peter chapter 5, verse 5 to 7 puts it this way. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I love that, that God resists the proud. It's not about prideful, but it's about being humble, understanding that we are with God in this circumstance. It's not what we can do, it's what can He can do through us. It says, therefore, humble your, yourselves under the mighty hand of God. We are humbled under the mighty hand of God right now, that He may exalt us in due time. I think the church right now is God is using this time to build us. He's using this time that when we come through this, the church will be stronger. The church is activated. I think the most dangerous thing the devil could do was poke a sleeping giant of the church and see the church activated. People about there being disciples, creating community, worshipping their God. It's incredible to see what God can do. The stories we're hearing are amazing of what people are encountering God and what God's doing for them, how God has come through for them through this time. Can I encourage you, be strong and courageous. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. It says this, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Cast all your cares upon Jesus. Cast all your cares. They, they, how do you do that? I think Romans 12.1 gives us some ideas on that. It says, Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by taking the, the fears and things that come around you and exchanging it with the faith and the peace of God. That we, we renew our mind. We allow, just like it was God said to Joshua, don't let the Word of God depart from you. It's, he's saying to us, don't let the Word of God depart from us in this time, that we renew our mind with the Word of God, that we renew our mind with Scripture, that we renew our mind with the Rema Word. Because I think we can be conformed because of the pressure around us, conformed to the world. But God wants us to be transformed people, but be transformers to be people who'll transform the world, the people who'll make a difference in the world. Can I encourage you? You are a difference maker. You are making a difference to those around you. There's people watching you all the time, seeing how you go about life. And, and you're seeing something in you that's that strength of God as you humble yourself in the mighty hand of God, that He'll lift you up before people and people are saying, what is it about you? There's something about that peace of God that surpasses all understanding that people notice. And if you're out there and you haven't got that peace, there's an opportunity today that you'll be able to receive the peace of God. You'll be able to receive Jesus into your life. It'll change your life forever. So can I encourage you, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed and be transformers. There's a, a Roy T. Bennett said these words. He said, if you want to be happy, don't dwell on the past. Don't worry about the future. Focus living fully in the present. And I think that's such a key scripture, or such a key quote for today, that we don't want to be, be dwelling in the past and saying, oh, well, I remember when, before the virus. That's gone. You can't change that right now. Yeah, don't worry about the future because I can tell you we will go through this. We've been through these things before. We've been through uh, swine flu. We've been through recessions and we come through. We've been through world wars and we come through. You will come through. It's how you come through. It's how you come through in the strength of God. Then we, we do that by living present today, taking the opportunities that God gives us today because there is opportunity in this. Sometimes we can't see it because the world's so loud. Sometimes we can't see it because our circumstances are, are shouting at us, at us just like they would have been shouting at Joshua as he looked at the fortified cities and saying, how do I do this? And God's saying, you walk around it. That can be shouting at you today. Your fortified city, your circumstance could be shouting at you today. But God's saying, hold on, come cast all your cares upon me. Let me be involved. I will help you through that. Live fully in the present. You see, Jesus gave advice to His disciples and in the middle of a circumstance that was going on, they were trying to cast out a devil and they couldn't cast it out. And they come to Jesus and said, why can't we cast this devil out? And this is how Jesus answered, him, answered them in Matthew chapter 17. It said, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why can't we cast this devil out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, 
For assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you'll be able to say to this mountain, move from here to there. I want to catch this, that Jesus didn't address the devil problem. He addressed their problem. It wasn't the devil problem. He said, hold on to it. Let's just leave the devil casting out for a side. Let's get to the problem here. Because of your unbelief. And it's so easy to allow unbelief to come around us. It's so easy to, in the circumstances for that unbelief to capture us. But he's saying, no, no, get belief. He's saying, if you've got faith, that little bit of faith, that little bit of faith, the size of a mustard seed, you'll say to the mountain, be thou removed. Watch your mountain. What's your mountain today? What's your circumstance? It may be money. It may be food. It may be that you're locked up and you can't go out. It. Whatever your circumstances are, hold the tick. Come on. Look at the opportunities that are presented to you today. Look, grab hold of your present reality. Because you're saying, hold on, it's impossible. But he's saying it's nothing is impossible for you. And then he addressed the devil. Then he addressed the bit and he said, this, nothing, this kind does not go out except through prayer and fasting. He was dealing with the devil then. But what he, before that, he was dealing with the unbelief. And I think he's dealing with our challenge of that today, that we can grab hold of faith today, that we can grab hold of the mustard seed of faith. You see, Luke chapter 18, verse 27, it says this, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And we can try and do this alone. We can try and get through a crisis by ourselves. We can try and do all those things in our own ability. But God would encourage us to come back to Him, to cast all our cares upon Him, to allow our mind to be renewed as we go through this incredible challenge. Because it can seem impossible to you, but it's so possible for God. I've seen it many times in my life as I've seen miracles Seeing people who have been, people have said, the doctors have said they're going to die. I've seen them come to life and live. I've seen healing miracles. I've seen financial miracles. I've seen financial miracles in my own life. Standing in the middle of the 1988 recession with 46 staff across two states, I saw God move. We sold our, our fleet of cars that we had to downsize our fleet. We sold that in the middle of that recession. We sold all of our cars and got all the payout figures and more. Because God can move for you no matter what your circumstances are. And you might be sitting there today and maybe you don't know Jesus. You're saying, this is crazy. The Scriptures answer that question in 1 Corinthians 1.8. It says this, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. What we're talking about can seem foolishness to you. And even when you are saved and you're going on with God and you're in church, you can seem, wow, how do I get through this? Come back to that faith. The world will look at who we are and say, that's crazy. And yes, it is. But just as Joshua had to walk around the walled city and shout at the end of it, it was crazy, but God moved. God wants to move in your circumstance. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing right now, no matter your circumstance, God wants to help you and move through your circumstance can seem like foolishness, can seem like God is irrelevant, but God is powerful and wants to help you. You know, I'm always encouraged by the prayers of Paul. Paul talks about prayer a lot and he always encourages him, always lifts me up. And there's a certain prayer in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. It says this, For this reason I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named. He bowed his knee to God. He's saying, it's not my ability, it's his ability. He says that he would grant to you, grant you according to the riches of his glory. God's got plenty of this stuff. We know that the riches of God's glory, he's got gold roads in heaven. Money's never a problem to God. And sometimes we can, money being a problem to us, but he's saying according to his riches, the riches of God in heaven, that you will be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. I think the inner man's important to understand because I think the outward man, uh, we, we live in our mind and all of those things, but our inner man is what speaks to us. Our inner man is the, the thing that really speaks to us and the opportunity to have Christ dwell in our inner man. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that God wants to come into your life, be your Lord and Saviour, that He wants to come and give you that peace, 
It says then, and this is the promise, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints, because I think it's sometimes hard to comprehend the promises of God, what He's giving us, what's here for us right now, the length and width, the depth and height, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And I love this promise of Scripture. It says that now to Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more, exceedingly abundantly above, this version says, all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. You see, the power of God is in us. It's not our ability, it's His ability in us. The power of God is in us. His faith has come in us. The power of God is in you. Exceedingly abundantly more through the power of God in you as you declare over your circumstance, as you declare over your family, as you declare over your workplace, as you declare over the problems or the challenges, your, your fortified city that's out in front of you. You can expect exceedingly abundantly more to happen. But there's, there's something incredibly powerful. And then it says, to Him be the glory the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. If you're part of the church, these promises are for you. But can I ask you, friend, what are you asking God for in these times? What are you asking God for? You see, your promises, as we've seen this morning through Scripture, they come by faith. They come by faith. And if you start to ask and you start to allow your mind to be renewed, you can see these promises come. As I read the Scriptures and see the list of the heroes of faith in Hebrews, the hero of faith through time, faith was only called faith when it was tested. I know we live in testing times. Can I encourage you to let your, sh your faith shine to the world around you? Let your faith shine. Our faith is so important because it's rooted and grounded in Jesus. But friend, do you know Him or do you only know of Him? You see, we can do the Christian thing, we can do the religious thing, but do you know God? Because these promises come out of a relationship with God. It comes out of a relationship by asking Jesus into your life, by asking Jesus into your heart. Will you do that today? If you don't know Jesus, if you just know of Him, or maybe this is the first time you've ever watched an online church service or you've ever had any experience with church, God wants to come into your life right now. That's your next step to ask Jesus into your life. Such a simple process. And it's, it's as simple as saying a simple prayer. And I'm going to help you pray that prayer this morning. So if you'd like that, I'd encourage you to just pray this prayer with me. It's as simple as this. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, to be my Lord, to be my Saviour. Forgive me for everything I've done wrong. And I ask you to make yourself so real to me. Let me experience you in these times. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks again for joining us today uh, for another Highlands Church Online. What a great message it was from Pastor Ken that we got to listen to in a great worship set as well. I'm hoping that it is encouraging you and inspiring you, you to grow in whatever season you find yourself in. Uh, we get the opportunity now to ask a few questions and look at some, some practical applications, even a little bit further than what we heard already about some of those things that we heard from. So Ken, it's great to have you with us again after delivering a message. Uh, but some questions here that I'd love you to think about answering yourself and how you could apply it or even chat in your small groups uh, virtually as you meet on your phones and computers but uh, to start with um, what does being courageous look like mm. uh, sometimes we can say the word uh, but not really sure how what does courage look like yeah. how do we be strong and courageous like God commanded Joshua yeah it's a good question is that the uh, I think courage is evidenced by what we do mm. You can say a lot of things, you can, you know, I can, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be a gunner. But courage is in the going. Courage is actually saying, let's have a go. Let's actually go and do this thing. I think when God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous, and he had to say it to him a number of times, because I think there's that effort that he was actually working through. I'm not sure about this. And I think that courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage is actually overcoming the fear. 
and facing the battle and facing our circumstances and facing whatever you're going on with right now is being strong and courageous in this time and, and doing something with it, using the whatever's going on around your life to grab hold of it and be courageous in it, no matter what the circumstances. Yeah, it's really cool. I love the, the movie, um, the thing in The Wizard of Oz yeah. with the cowardly lion. Um, but because he was going to the wizard to try to get courage from him, but mm. it says the courage was always there within you. Yeah. But the interesting thing is he, he ruled himself out because he felt like uh, like he had the feeling of fear, felt yeah. like he wasn't courageous, so he couldn't be. Yeah. But because God commanded us, we anything that God commands us, we can do. Yeah. And so we can be courageous if we would be courageous. Yeah. Uh, and so I love that. I just love that little story of that. He went there and he could have been courageous the whole time, but he, he thought the feeling of fear ruled him out of being a courageous, strong yeah, person. That's right. I think that's why God kept saying to Joshua, no, just be it. Yeah. Take courage. Don't worry about fear. Just take the steps, yeah, which is pretty right. cool. Um, so you also mentioned a verse, one of the most popular verses and one of my favorite, Romans 12, yeah. uh, about being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Uh, what part do we actually play, or people at home, what, what part do we actually play in that transformation, mm -hmm. in that renewing of our mind? What habits uh, can we form or disciplines do we put in place? Or yeah. what, what do we do, or is it all God? Well, I think a lot of it's us. It's for, that's, it says, be transformed. It's something that we've got to do. Or we've got to transform our mind. I think what God said to Joshua was have the Word of God in front of you all the time because there's distractions. And I think it's how we get into our mind and tell ourselves that we can do it. That inner man, the inner man that I think speaks loud, the inner man can say, you can't do it. The inner man saying, who do you think you are? Uh, as well as the world, as well as people. Uh, but I find it's the inner man that I, I fight with the most, that I've got to renew my mind. That's the inner, the inner man, the, the mind. It's the mind is your will, your emotions, uh, and your, your soul, really. So it's how you work with those emotions. How do you overcome the emotion to say, yes, I'm going to do this? Because emotionally, you'll say, no, I'm, I'm tapping out. Yeah. But we can overcome that, but we've got to convince ourselves to do that sometimes. And, and that, the way I do that is, is my faith confession. It's what I talk to myself about all the time. It, it's how I get my inner man talking to overcome, to renew this mind of mine. And then I find that my mind grows because then I get confidence. Yep. And the risk is cockiness. But to come back, do we get confidence in the renewing of our mind that I can do it? And we find, I've found that as I step out and I do things, God meets me. But if I don't step out, He never meets me. So it's in that stepping out, in the renewing of my mind, that I build my confidence. I, I do a little thing and God's there. That I do a bigger thing and God's there. And when we left my job, and I loved my job and left my job, um, to go into Bible college, we left from a, a CEO role, salary and all of that, to nothing. But that step, God did a whole pile of other things that stepped me through so I could take that step. Uh, and then I took that step and God met me again. And he meets us at church and he meets us in this circumstance. And he met me through the, 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 the uh, recession in 1988 and he met me there. Each time I know that God meets us. And that has, is one of the ways I renew my mind through the, the word of my testimony. The blood of the lamb's done. We know that. But the Bible says you're overcome by the blood of the lamb. Done. And the word of our testimony. We've got to actually have that testimony and keep building that testimony. That it's new every day. Cool. And so what, what kind of things could we do, like maybe in isolation or in, wherever we find ourselves now, that we can start renewing our mind? Let's say, let's say we're new to this. How do we build that testimony? Or yeah. what, what does changing our mind look like on certain topics or about our own identity or about who God even is? Yeah. I think the identity is really important. I think changing your mind on your identity. That you've, you're created for now. So Doug Cameron is created to be in Toowoomba as a lead pastor now, to lead us through this time and lead the church and lead the staff. You're created for now. And, and you've got to actually allow that to, to sink in. And you've got to tell yourself that you are created for now. And you see the outcomes of it. You see amazing things happening in your life. But even now, in, in, if you're sitting at home and you're isolated, how do you start to plan for your future? How do you actually say, okay, God, what's next for me? What's my next step? Next step might be 
going and doing the growth track. The next step might be, hey, I'm planning a, a, an online business. My next step might be something, you know, totally different to where you are right now. But to take that step, to see this time as an opportunity, renew your mind to the opportunity. Because sometimes I find that the world can close us down and we miss the opportunities that are out there. Uh, that we renew our mind to the opportunities out there yeah. and see them, you know, and, and rather than see fear, see opportunity. So starting to get to know God a little bit more, yeah. uh, talking to Him, running things by, getting a vision from Him. Mm. Those are things that are really simple, practical for us. And, and prayer's not meant to be religious. Prayer's just like we're talking right now. Hey God, how are you going? Mm -hmm. and people go, oh, you can't say it. No, well, that's how God is relationship. Yeah. That we, He wants relationship. He wants us to talk to Him and say, hey, God, what about this situation? Um, Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's God talking to us, to Christians, not non-Christians. Saying, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door, I want to come in. Yeah. I'm going to dine with you. I'm going to sit down at the dinner table and have a, have a dinner chat with you. Uh, and I think that's important that, we, that prayer becomes that. Let's have the dinner chat with God. Yeah, yeah cool. Uh, and one last one. You talked about another great verse, the exceedingly and abundantly more uh, with, through Christ that is within us. Mm. Um, how do we deal with this tension of, of living in what might actually be or just a feeling of lack while still believing for the abundantly more? How mm. do we go through going, well, I'm not experiencing it now, but I'd love to. Like, Sometimes yeah. it's easy to... Well, when you're living in abundance, it's easy, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> when you've got the exceedingly abundantly more, that's easy. But it's the believing for the exceedingly abundantly more. It's the asking. And one of the things I've found is God gives things at the right time because he's interested in growing us. He's interested in, in us growing as people, growing as Christians, growing in our character. And, and sometimes he's more interested in our character than the stuff around us sure. and build our character. And the exceedingly abundantly more, uh, we sometimes put it in as uh, I need, you know, material things but actually God wants us to grow in things that are, are more valuable than that and that's character and the grace and the ability and faith the exceedingly abundantly more and that and the material things as well he says that he's going to provide the material things yeah. as well and Matthew says that that seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you but it's the seeking first bit that's yeah. important Oh, that's fantastic. So hopefully there's some things in there that, that you can think about, that you can apply. Um, and that's really what we want to help is you to be encouraged, inspired, challenged, and but growing and applying the things that God is speaking to you about 